Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Spectre P and we are Spectre AI. This is the third video in our video series on quantum security. In the previous video we learned what quantum security and quantum computing are. In this video we'll learn why quantum computing performs better than classical computing under certain scenarios. We are going to see the quantum advantage and where it applies. Let's dive right in. Uh, computing the steps necessary to complete a computer program is defined by something called Big O Notation. This is simply a math tool which describes how a given algorithm scales as the amount of input data increases. More specifically, Big O Notation expresses the upper bound or worst case scenario of an algorithm's growth rate as input size increases. An example would be n steps for n inputs will result in O of n steps. Certain quantum algorithms operate at roughly square root of n steps. So from the example below, given an algorithm with 10,000 inputs, a classical system will run the algorithm in 10,000 steps, while a quantum system will run that same algorithm in 100 steps. This is due to something called um, superposition and entanglement, which are inherent properties of quantum mechanical systems, and we'll discuss them at length in later videos. The energy growth with computation demands is clearly seen in this graph. In this example, the classical cost grows linearly with n, while the quantum version grows sublinearly. Notice that this advantage grows with steps. The more computational steps required, the more energy any known systems require, but the difference between the classical and quantum systems is material. You can see that for complex many-step problems such as protein folding analysis, galactic growth, drug design, modeling of, of black holes, or modeling human behavior for applications such as structuring prepayment speeds, in mortgage securitization, and yes, for data security, the energy savings quantum advantage is huge. Now, take a look at time versus algorithm steps. There's clearly a point below to the left of the crossover at which there's no appreciable difference between quantum and classical system performance. This graphic drives home the quantum advantage at large number of algorithm input steps. Looking far to the right on the graphic, you can see as the input steps get really large, the time for classical systems become effectively infinite. For example, a classical computer guessing 1 trillion keys per second would need roughly 10 to the 58th power years to brute force the SHA-256 modern encryption algorithm and the age of our universe is approximately 14 billion years. The question that typically comes up now is why does such a quantum advantage exist for algorithms with a large number of input steps? Earlier I mentioned superposition and entanglement. This is why in the chart below you can see how the real power in a quantum system is its ability to represent many states at once while a classical system can only explore one state. So you can see that in a 100 qubit system, you have two to the 100 possible states which exceed the number of atoms in the universe. Now, not all these states are equally useful, but interference guides the algorithm toward the correct solution. The processing power of quantum systems is enormous. It's important to understand that superposition and entanglement are not a creation of human beings or algorithms. They are intrinsic inherent properties of subatomic particles. The current issue with quantum systems is hardware. Decoherence, noise, and logical qubit count are the current issues. We'll discuss this in depth in future videos, but for now the chart below drives the point home. Quantum hardware has a bit to go. Although there are many recent advances which are nothing short of amazing, Logical qubit count needs to increase by three orders of magnitude. Error rates need to fall by two orders of magnitude, and coherence time needs to improve by four orders of magnitude. Just to drive home the point again, please look at the graphic below. It shows exactly what constructive and destructive interference is. 
This is important because as we discussed, interference is one of the two elements we control in quantum computing algorithm design. Below you can see completely constructive, completely destructive, and partial phase interference. We will be working a lot with this. So what are the key takeaways here? Quantum computing is all about processing input steps more efficiently via superposition and entanglement, no magic to it. This efficiency leads to less energy per run and much less time for certain large steps problems. Quantum hardware must continue to improve by increasing qubit count, longer coherence times, and lower error rates. And the power of a quantum system comes from interference, not parallel universes or magic. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe. Check out our quantum security website on the web at spectrai.ai and our books on Amazon. The site has great research and resources. And register for free and enjoy. Sign up for the 55 realistic AI proctored labs to really learn quantum security. We have three sample labs on our website, and you can read excerpts from our books to match with the problems. Leave a comment so we can make the channel better. See you in the next video.